and welcome to How to Play Klondike Solitaire. Klondike Solitaire is the most popular of all the Solitaire games. This is the one that most people learn to play first. What you see here is the layout of the game. It's seven columns, and if you look, as you move from left to right, there's more cards underneath. Now on the left side, you'll see there's four sort of ghost slots. And what we're looking to do there, which is the goal of the game, is to put each suit from ace all the way up to king. So for example, you could put this there. The next thing you'd want to be able to put there is a two of clubs, three of clubs, four of clubs, etc. And then you see that there's the pile on the right, right here. And when I tapped it, I got three cards. So if the goal of the game is to line them all up from ace to king on the left side, we're going to start by move the ace of uh, the one ace we have access to over and it reveals the cards underneath. And we can move a two actually on that and it reveals the cards underneath. Now let's get to the main focus of the gameplay, which is that you're able to move the cards around on the board, but this is important. You cannot move a red onto a red or a black onto a black. What you're trying to build is strings in a row of alternating cards, black, red, black, red, black, red. So in this case, we can move a, a red seven onto a black eight and it will go and it will flip that over. And we can move this eight red eight onto a black nine, and it will go. And we can move this jack over here. So now I'm gonna to get to the three cards here on the right. You can't actually access all three cards. The card on the top here is the five of diamonds. That's actually the only card you can access. So there's you turn over three cards, but only this top one's working. But right now there's no black six to put this on. So we're not actually able to do anything. We tap it again and see the next three cards. In this case, we do have an ace, which we can move over. And we have a king. It brings me to the next point, which is the only way you can put a king on the board is if you had a free column. So if, for example, this card wasn't there and we only had six columns, we could move a king and begin that column. Unfortunately, we don't have that yet. So let's go ahead and look at the next ones. Well, there's a four, a black four, we can put it on that. One of the things that I'm constantly looking for as I move cards around is, is there a move that I can make where I can move something on top of something else? Um, and it takes a lot of practice because sometimes you just miss it and you really don't wanna miss it. So here's a seven that can go on a, uh, a black seven that can go on a red eight and allows me to move this red uh, six to put it there. And now that that 10 has been exposed, I actually can move this entire row then onto that. Again, we move forward and we have a black five, which we can put on this red six and allows us to move either say this four onto it or this four onto it. And allows me to also move the two over. And now remember I said about that king in the free column, we now can move that over there. And then we also can move the black queen on top of that. Look, it's exposed another ace, which we can move over there. Now here's a three of clubs, which we can put onto the two of clubs. And it actually allows us to move that four of clubs over there as well, turns over another card. We're also going to move this five onto that. We cannot move anything but a king into an open slot. Since there's six columns there, unfortunately only a king could make that seventh column. So here's the next round of cards. And here's a black 10, which I can put there. And it ex opens up this six, which I can put on a black seven. And now it's opened up this three, which I can put on a black four. And we're gonna keep going. And now it's given us that missing two that we need to start moving there. We're still missing the ace of hearts. Um, and now we've hit to the end of the deck, but we actually are able to start up again. And now you'll see that it's, it's slightly different because it showing us the other cards underneath that we didn't get access to. There's not much I can do there, and there's not much I can do with that queen. And now I've got to the end. But see, I can run it again, but I can use that too. I want you to take a look at this. I'm actually able to move this three, the three of spades, to a different four. And by moving it to a different four, it allows me to clear that up. And then allows me actually to move that five. And by doing that, I now can move that five there, and I can move that six there. And by doing that, I now have cleared this up, and I can move that. And I'm allowed to start building now the three and the four. And, and it allows me to essentially, potentially, stay in the game. Because now I can put that seven there. And... And now in the it now allows me to move that king into, into a spot. I can move that three. 
And suddenly I'm finding myself, and then I can put that king in that other spot, and suddenly I'm finding myself going, well, this game isn't actually over. Back down. I can put my uh, a king there, I mean a, a queen there. And if I had a uh, black jack, I could put it there, and then I can move this 10. I can move this 9. This game is letting us, we can still move the 4, we can still move the 5, we can move the 6, we can move the 7, and it's going to allow us to, un to open up a lot of these cards, which is still things here. And so now we can move that. We have a 7. We can now start to put all these cards around, and now we've turned actually every card over. There's lots of variations in how these play these rules. I'm showing you a simple version. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment. Thanks. Bye.